So this is flip mini lecture number 42, and it's the first one on waves. The corresponding sections are night 16.2 and 16.3. And to make it a little bit more uh, visceral and Californian, let's have a surfer hanging out here on a surfboard. So here's the nice flat ocean without any waves coming through. And let's even, as usual, lay down a coordinate system. Let's make this, as we go to the right, let's make that the x direction. And so the surfer's over there waiting for waves to come in. Let's give ourselves a little wave. Let's put a little wave here. Okay, here's a nice little wave. I made the front side of the wave a little steeper than the back side of the wave, and I put a little trough ahead of the wave, so there's my wave. Let's not worry about the wave breaking or changing shape. Let's just assume the wave moves nice and steadily to the right with speed V. That means that if I waited a time, delta T, every part of this wave would have moved V delta T to the right. So uh, let's have V delta T be one marker length. That means that the crest of this thing has moved to there. And this part of this thing has moved to there. And this trough that's out ahead has moved to there. And this bit of the leading edge has moved to there. And this part that's behind has moved to there. And maybe that trailing edge has moved to there. So if that's marker length represented uh, a little bit of time that we've waited and how far the whole wave moved in that time, here's the new, here's the new picture of the wave. Now you might ask yourself, we've got a function here of x, which was represented by this black line. So zoop, and then up and then down, and then it goes back to zero all the way out. Maybe I should even put an origin of my coordinate system in here. How about I make that the x equals zero line right there? So I've got a function of x that I've drawn in the black. And I'll make that obvious here by putting it in uh, black ink. And now I've got another function. It's a different function. Obviously, it has a relationship to the original function, but I have a different function that I've graphed here in green. Let's call that, and I'm drawing it up in green, let's call that g of x. There's some relationship between f of x and g of x. You might say, oh, f of x is shifted, g of x is shifted to the right relative to f of x. So I would have g of x is equal to f of x plus s, where s is the shift. But actually that gets you exactly the wrong thing. <laughs> g of x is f of x minus s, where that gets you the shift. Why? Well, suppose this was f of x, and this peak here, right here, is, uh, I don't know, I'll make that 10 meters, okay? And then here, down here, I, where this trough hits, I'll make that at 15 meters. And back here where the wave just began, I'll make that five meters. So what we've got here is f of x at five meters, f of x at 10 meters, f of x at 15 meters. Now, g of x though, is supposed to be peaked over here, which uh, on this graph looks like it's about 17 meters. So g of x is supposed to be peaked at 17 meters. Looks like s equals v delta t, the way I've drawn it, looks like about seven meters on this graph. So the shift is seven meters. And you might have gone, oh, g of x is f of x plus s. But try it, it doesn't work. Try this instead. g of x is f of x minus s. Let's try putting in a value here. g of x, well, it's supposed to have a peak at 17 meters. So g of 17 meters is supposed to equal f, I'm putting in x equals 17 of this, of 17 meters minus s, which on our drawing here looks like seven meters. So um, we've got that. 
which is equal to f at 10 meters. So sure enough, if we put a minus sign in here, g is peaked further to the right than f. f is peaked at 10 meters, g is peaked at 17 meters. So there's your relationship if the shift to the right is s. Now the shift to the right is actually v delta t. It's however long you waited. So g of x is actually equal to f of x minus v delta t. Assuming this wave is moving to the right with speed v. And by the way, we could choose uh, t equals 0 to when we took the original snapshot, f of x. That original snapshot time where I drew it in black here, that could have been the at t equals 0 time. In which case, delta t is just t, right? Because if I say, if I choose t equals 0 to be the initial time, well, then delta t, which is just t, if t initial is the zero time. So uh, I could write g of x is equal to some function of x minus vt. And that, by the way, is actually the most general formula for a wave traveling to the right with speed v. And uh, it might not surprise you that another formula for a wave traveling to the left with speed v is h of x is equal to h of x plus, is equal to uh, f of x plus vt. This captures something that you guys haven't dealt with much before, which is what we have here now is functions of two variables. And I want to emphasize uh, kind of the way Knight does it. Suppose that you just took a snapshot of what was going on out here at the beach. For example, you took this snapshot and you saw something. That's what Knight calls a snapshot. And that what you get, uh, assuming this is a right traveling wave and we're back to this situation, what you get when you take one of these snapshots is you just put in some value for t. Like, I don't know, t is 11.1 .1 seconds. That's how long after t equals zero I waited. At t equals 11.1 .1 seconds, I took the picture. Well, then I put v times 11.1 .1 in here, and now I've got some function of x. Now you can do this, think about this completely alternatively. Instead of thinking this uh, this is a snapshot, I want you, the reason I put the surfer there is imagine this whole thing from the surfer's perspective. Okay, from the surfer's perspective, maybe all this surfer can feel is how much the surfer has gone up and down, okay? So over here, where the surfer's at, for quite a while, I'm gonna draw a graph here. For quite a while, if I think of this as a function now of time, for quite a while, the surfer felt nothing. So nothing, 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 nothing and then the first thing that hit the surfer was this little low patch here so the first surfer dipped down a little bit okay the next thing as this wave hit the surfer is the surfer started to rise quite quickly on the front side so the surfer's bobbing up as this wave passes through where the surfer's sitting this started surfer started to rise quite quickly and then the crest of this wave passed the surfer. So now it's peaked out. And then this more gentle backside of the wave lowered the surfer back down. So here's our soft backside of the wave. And then once this whole nice wave has passed, now the surfer is back to sitting at the nice calm water level. Now let's draw a line through that. Check this out. This is totally not what you'd expect. This graph that we've just drawn here, which is the graph that the surfer experiences, is actually looks to be flipped relative to the graph that we drew here, which is the snapshot graph. So Knight calls this a snapshot graph, and Knight calls this a history graph. 
And one of the amusing things is that for a wave traveling to the right, that a snapshot graph and a history graph exactly mirror each other. Now, if this wave was moving very, very rapidly, by the way, this width would not necessarily be the same on this graph as on this graph. In fact, the units of this graph here are meters, and the units of this graph here are probably time in seconds. So there's no real way to compare a graph that's got time in seconds on the horizontal axis with a graph that's got time in meters on the horizontal axis. But just to emphasize how different these can be, imagine that the, the wave just sort of shot through here at high speed. Well, then this uh, dip on the front side of the experience at the front of the side of the wave would occur very quickly. So we'd have we'd still have a dip, but it would occur very quickly. So it would be whoop, and we'd still have a ride up the front side of the wave, but that would occur very quickly. So that would be extra steep, and it would still peak out, and the back side, which is more gentle would be uh, more gentle than the front side, but would still be very compressed on the back side of this graph than it is on the back side of that graph. So if the wave's moving very fast, you see that on the time, the, the history graph, it's rather compressed. Conversely, suppose this wave is moving through here really slowly. Okay, so maybe this whole thing from beginning to end takes many seconds to pass by the surfer. In that case, on the history graph, well, this front part would arrive, but it would take a long time in seconds to reach its minimum, and then it would go back up, and then it would take a long time to reach its maximum, and then it would take an even longer time to settle back down to zero. So one other thing I wanna emphasize about the snapshot graph and the history graph is they're not only uh, mirrored to each other if the wave is moving to the right, but also they can be stretched and compressed depending on how fast V is.